Greetings, assalamu alaikum, peace, hello. I hope this message finds all of you all well. My name is Hannibal Shakur, and I'm here outside of the Oakland Police Department, and I have a little uh, story I want to tell. Central Police Department, lines being recorded by Sean. Zimmerman called police to report a suspicious looking person. Hey, we've had some break ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. Then left his car with a fully loaded pistol concealed in his waistband. <sighs> These assholes, they always get away. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. Okay. A fight ensued, and Zimmerman then shot Martin once in the heart. He died. Uh, members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Reached the verdict. In the circuit court of the 18th Judicial Circuit in and for Seminole County, Florida, State of Florida versus George Zimmerman, verdict, we the jury find George Zimmerman not guilty. So say we all four person. Zimmerman's acquittal on Saturday was decried by civil rights leaders and sparked protests in several cities. The Los Angeles Police Department called a citywide tactical alert. Thousands snake through Lower Manhattan tonight and back up around to Times Square. We begin with breaking news. Tensions rose tonight in Oakland. Stanford, Florida is some 2,500 miles from Oakland. For this crowd, the Trayvon Martin story feels local. The murder of Trayvon Martin represented to black people, uh, people of color and oppressed people in general here in Oakland and nationwide and across the world really is that white supremacy has um, infested this country so much that someone can brutally and savagely murder a teenage young man, um, get away from it scot-free and become a, a celebrity of sorts for doing so as some type of poster child, as someone who quote unquote stood their ground to this, you know, thug, which really has become a cold word for nigger. We all were watching that trial closely and we found it to be very important as uh, this is a shift in, in recent years from police getting away with killing anyone to now just vigilantes. And we found that to be particularly disturbing especially after the, the, all of the string of murders by law enforcement that we've seen in the Bay Area, it was another sort of uh, slap in the face to those of us that, that believe in, in human life. Police terrorism is a regular occurrence here, you know? Um, so the people of Oakland identified with the treatment that Trayvon Martin received unjustly at the hands of punk-ass George Zimmerman. We, one of the reasons we're here standing in front of the police department is because this was one of the places that we marched because we believe that it is a representative of the same institutions that allowed Zimmerman to walk. There is a lot of cleanup to do in downtown Oakland after two straight nights of protests. So Alex, is the city bracing for more problems? Well, there is another rally planned for tonight here in downtown Oakland. Of all of the hundreds of people protesting, shutting down freeways, marching. About seven of us were arrested. And of those seven, two were prosecuted and persecuted as scapegoats. And I'm one of those two, and we are the Trayvon Two. Oh, they're two brothers who need to be supported, um, who need to, you know, have all charges dropped and, you know, who we need to rally around and you know, they're probably targeted specifically for being organizers and also for being Muslims but any of us that disagrees with this wicked <laughs> capitalist imperialist neo-colonial government locally and nationally and globally can be a target to receive what you know is going on to them right now. We're marching down Broadway uh, as we start getting away from downtown Oakland and we're moving in the direction of the sort of like bougie, yuppie, hipster bars, boutiques, and hangout spots. You started to hear uh, different noises, crashes and bangs, and, and I'm not entirely sure what all we're hearing, right? At this point, 
out of nowhere, I'm slammed on the ground by a police officer. Uh, and, and I just feel the weight increase and increase and increase and eventually they picked me up and they had had six police officers on top of me after they slammed me. I'm bleeding from my head and from my knee and they're dragging me onto the truck. It should have been dismissed immediately based on the absence of evidence, but it was continued as a misdemeanor. And they're still not ready to prosecute us for this misdemeanor. And we are tired of going to court. There's conflicting testimonies from the officers, um, from not turning on the body cam to a whole bunch of other stuff that proves that they're obviously fabricating this and dragging it out to drain you know, support and time and energy from people who, you know, decided to practice their First Amendment right, you know, to freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. We are now a year to date of, of being arrested and they still to this day have not been ready to present their case. And they're claiming to not have possession of any videos of the incident. When, if we know that these police officers were sent to a march where they believed that people were breaking the law, we know that they would have turned on their video cameras to record what crimes were being committed. And if there's a crime being committed, there should be a video record of that which has not been produced to this day. They have not produced one single video with any evidence of a crime being committed. And the police themselves are contradicting each other on who they believe actually broke the window. The police officer who said that he saw me break the window has recanted his statement and said in court, under, uh, under, under oath, that he didn't actually see me break the window, that he never actually saw me break the window, and still, I'm facing charges. We hope that people will not forget Trayvon Martin. And we hope that George Zimmerman will get what he deserves. We hope that people will continue to come together and struggle for the betterment of all people. We hope that people will stop being murdered by law enforcement and vigilantes. And we hope to see you in court July 25th.